Hi, welcome to our developer day talk on how to use GraphQL APIs in your Forge app, a crash course in using Confluence's new GraphQL APIs. I'm Tyler, a software engineer on the Confluence ecosystem team. And I am Lucas, a software engineer also on the Confluence ecosystem team. We'll start off by giving you an overview of what this talk is about. We'll first cover what is GraphQL and what is the Atlassian GraphQL API. Then we'll dive into building a Forge app. And then at the end, we'll talk about the future of Confluence's GraphQL APIs. Starting off, we'll cover what is GraphQL. Within this talk, we won't be going too in depth, but there's wonderful learning resources on the GraphQL website if you're interested in learning more. But at a high level, GraphQL is a query language for your API that offers what we believe to be three main benefits. The first is that you ask for what you need and you get exactly that. No longer do you get a response with a bunch of fields if you only need a couple of them. Second, you can get many resources in a single request. If you have a Confluence page and you also wanted the space it's with, you can get all that data in one request. Versus in REST, you would need to make two requests. Third, and what we believe is the best, is that all of this is described with a type system. This means you can have code generation, auto completion, and most importantly, a guarantee that the queries and mutations you're writing are actually correct. Next, we'll talk about the Atlassian GraphQL API. It's a GraphQL API for all Atlassian products. Confluence's GraphQL API is just one part of this larger Atlassian GraphQL API. There's a ton of benefits to having an API that spans multiple products like this. Before we dive into building the app, there's one last thing we need to cover, which is what are these things? These things are ARIs, otherwise known as Atlassian Resource Identifiers. In a world with data and products being more distributed, if we wanna offer a single public API surface area, we need to make sure the IDs themselves contain all of the info needed to get the data that they are associated with. You don't have to worry about treating these any different from any other ID. Pass them in and everything will be automatically handled for you. Now let's dive into building that Forge app. For our app today, let's create a Forge macro. We can do this via the Forge CLI, which you can learn more about in our Forge docs. Now let's start by creating the query that we want to send. All Confluence GraphQL fields are located on the Confluence Query API type, which is accessed through the top level Confluence field. Each product on the Latin GraphQL API has its own type that contains all fields related to that product. Note that this query contains the variable page ID. This means a value must be passed to this variable later when we make the request. The name of this query is read a Confluence page and asks for the title of the Confluence page with the respective ID. Now let's declare the right scopes for our, our app based on our query. Most Confluence GraphQL types require specific permissions to access them. To request these permissions, we need to declare the respective scopes inside the app manifest. If you've used scopes before in the Confluence REST API, note that these scopes are slightly different. Our query reads page data, so we need to declare the read page confluence scope. Now, let's make the GraphQL request. There are a few things to note. First, remember we need to pass a value for the page ID variable. So here, we declare a variables object that will be passed to the request. Second, all confluence GraphQL fields are currently in beta. This means we must pass in the X experimental API header with the value Confluence AGG data. And finally, we call the request graph method of the API module to make the GraphQL request. Now, let's use the results. The GraphQL response will either contain data or an error. If the request is successful, the response should contain the title of the page that we requested. Let's render the page's content ID and this title in our app. And now the last step is to deploy and run the app. It looks like our GraphQL request was successful. We have, uh, the, so this demo only used a page query. We also have queries and mutations for blog posts, comments, spaces, and much more. Now let's talk about the future of GraphQL at Atlassian. We plan to continue our GraphQL journey within the Confluence team. We wanna to continue to bring you more and more awesome GraphQL APIs that offer functionality that we could not normally offer you with REST. 
With that said, we do plan to continue to support and improve our existing REST APIs. The most important takeaway we want you to get from this talk is, of course, to build a Forge app, but also we really want your feedback. We would love to partner with you as we build the future of GraphQL APIs at Atlassian. If you are ready to take a bet on GraphQL, we would love to collaboratively work together and use your feedback to shape the direction of how we use GraphQL. We're looking for star partners to go on this journey with. If you're interested, please reach out to us. And speaking of feedback, developer satisfaction is top of mind for Confluence ecosystem, and we're launching a new initiative to track developer satisfaction. If you've worked on Confluence Cloud apps, we'd love to chat with you about your experience and learn what we can do to improve. Please reach out to pcondopun at atlassian.com to schedule a time to talk with one of our product managers. This would be a great opportunity for you to directly share feedback and influence our roadmap, so please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you.